Welcome back to ProCoach Radio. It is the 22nd of February. This is us kicking off 2024, episode five. Oh, we've got to do that at every single one. <laughs> ASMR, in your ears. This is a new studio. Kristen, if you're watching this, we've stolen your studio, so you can't have it back. This is now ours. I've actually put a Pro Coach Radio sign behind me, if you can't see it, a big fluorescent one. <laughs> <laughs> then a small picture of an egg right beside it. <laughs> but yeah, episode five, welcome back. We've got a little bit of stuff to go through today. It is a nice time of the year because it's pre-season. Exciting. We've got a bit more, you know, a bit more coming up in terms of everything hasn't kicked off yet. So, Zach, what's going on, mate? You've just started prep. Yeah, I just started prep myself. We spoke about this on the, we spoke about this on the way over. Obviously, the goal is just to run the process again more than anything else. Obviously, competing at the end of it is a it's just a kind of a byproduct of of displaying the graph that you've put in. And for me, again, we just spoke about it. My mind shit. My my mind shit. My mind shit. His brain is so used to swearing that it just comes <laughs> out. Just my mind fucking shit. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying not to. <laughs> my mindset has shifted a lot with over the last few years of when it comes to competing myself. Yeah. As you know, you know the last two and a half. It's been about three years since I've uh, competed. When was it? Three years. Twenty twenty one. 2021? Yeah, 2021. Yeah. So since then, obviously, there's been a big, big, big shift for myself, which I wanted to do and pushing that over to, to coaching. I don't want to be seen as a competitor, a good amateur or, or whatever anymore, an athlete. I want to be seen more as a coach and put my name out there for that because I feel that's where my stronger points are. I'm much better at coaching <laughs> than being a competitor. But well, I think that's a little bit harsh. But. but not listen. Nonetheless, I love the process. The process that I preach to my guys and girls, that is my soulful reason why. I just want to run the process again. There's no chasing anything. There's no back-to-back -back shows chasing that ultimate wins and and a, that elusive pro card. Yeah, it, it, it isn't anymore. I'm 38. Okay, I'm 38. Obviously, that doesn't give a. There's there's outliers, Mr. Rob Thurston. You can keep going, but um, for me, my soulful goal is is coaching. But yeah, so going back to that, I have started prep. I have given myself a window here of where I'm going to get back onto the the grind. Yeah. And if I'm honest with you, I'm really, really enjoying it, just starting off with, you know, getting up cardio in the morning, just getting that routine back. Yeah. Because the last two and a half years, mate, I've said this many times, it's like my routine has been get up at my Mac, doing check-ins. Yeah. Looking after everyone else, which obviously won't change, but yeah, eating fucking two meals a day, <laughs> eating two meals a day, or accompanied with a couple of monsters, a couple, uh, three or four, five, ten. Yeah, so I'm not chasing anything. Process is more important to me. Run this and then just do this regional, just for a bit of fun, and then just yeah, back into when it gets busy. Obviously, I am busy for this initial phase, but I've only just started prep, so it ain't going to affect me. Um, yeah. yeah, with the the first regional, and Ben Weeder coming up, a lot of athletes in there. So yeah. I need a lot of my cognitive function for that, which is what I'll have because, like I said, I've only just started. Mm. That's why you take Clan. That is why. <laughs> that is why. You, that's why you take Clan. So you just there like that. Yeah, good jacket. Yeah, um, you're on your phone like this. <laughs> <laughs> but I, honestly, mate, honestly, notice straight away in terms of productivity and stuff. Yes, I'm, I'm productive when you know when I'm. When what, I'm what was the word at the weekend that you couldn't say? Commonalities. Common, commonalities. So we basically presented in front of like 30 people at Amsterdam this weekend. There was a single word on Zach's presentation that had featured about four times, <laughs> commonalities. And he fucked it up twice and then was like, it's not going to say just it now. He's like, that one. Just, just look on the fucking board. Um, <laughs> commonalities. Commonality. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that is pretty much why I'm doing this. Uh, yeah, just winning a prep. Yeah. Prep, okay. That is pretty much it. That is and if it all goes tits up, he's going to be in shape for a holiday. So either way, you it's win. It's a fucking win-win. You win. It is a win-win. I think there's a take-home message there in terms of the more... And social media is the fucker for this in terms of amplifying it on a bigger scale. But the more you emphasize success as only being the outcome of turning pro when realistically that's way more elusive than actually people think in yeah. the first place when you actually yeah. get there and you're like, fucking hell, there's 20 people in my class and there's yeah. one pro card and there's five classes. Yeah. Very hard to do. If all you're doing is fixating your happiness and fulfillment in that process as that, you're going to have a pretty shit time when you can be yeah, in yeah. the first place. Absolutely. And the pressure will end up eating you up. 
Yep. <laughs> I've been there. I've been there before. I've been there before. So yeah, no, I totally agree, mate. Totally agree. It's, you know, for a lot of times, you look back and think, well, my most successful preps, the preps that I enjoyed the most, it was just when you fucking just love the process and you love yeah. bodybuilding. Yeah. And then as a byproduct, you end up maximizing what you can out of the process. Honestly, first few preps for me. Yeah. Because I didn't even know what a fucking pro card was. Yeah, yeah. If I didn't know what it was, you just yeah. posted about it. So that they would, I just surrendered to the whole fucking process and just yeah. ran it. Just ticked the fucking boxes, enjoyed the hardship, enjoyed the grind, enjoyed the... I enjoyed more than anything the fact that a lot of people can't fucking do it. Yeah. That was always one of my big drivers. I can fucking do this. Not many others can. Mm. We can all prep. Yeah, yeah. But can we all get fucking peeled? Yeah. Can we all get fucking peeled? It. Like, you know, when you go and have to, you know, visit the big man downstairs, it's like not many people can fucking handle that and they yeah. fight it like fuck. But um, I agree. I totally agree. Yeah, I, I like that. My number one goal for this year is to not like look like I've got a flesh eating disease by December and a good start you've made to it and a good start I've, made <laughs> I've put 14 kilograms on in the last eight weeks so it's, it's, a, it's a good start it's the it's 12 hour year break when it does that but it is the creatine and I'm still looking after the old FSH mm -hmm. still in the back of my mind but also I'd like to be a little bit more robust again shall we say yeah and my biggest goal for this year is the balance between the two because it got to a point over the last couple of years where I started to use it as a bit of an excuse of being like, fuck it, I can't balance both, so I'm just going to go completely on the other end of the spectrum. It's funny you just and said just that. not train. It's funny you just said that because I'm thinking about saying something in a minute along the same lines. Yeah, but it's yeah. like, it's like I'm either, I either do it or I don't do it at all. And yeah. it's like I just fucking put it to the corner. I'm just going to focus on work and I'm not going to train. Yeah. But after a while, it's like, Jesus, I fucking miss training. Yeah. I actually miss training. I, I yeah. miss bodybuilding. I miss that process because it's an hour or an hour and a half or two hours out of my day where I'm not doing check-ins, but I'm also, it's a little bit like, that's my version of self-care. Yeah. It's my version of self-care. Coming yeah. out of the gym being like, oh, I can go and sit at my desk now for four hours and I'm, I'm fucking sound. Yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah. before it was, you know, there wasn't that, when there's not that level of, um, it's not, a, I guess it's escapism, but... Like when you love to train, like that's your you time, isn't it? Yeah. And when you don't have that, you start. That's to your rest. Fucking nuts. That's your rest away from the check-ins. Yeah. The work, that part of it. It doesn't matter how much you fucking love it. Yeah. You need, you need a little bit of time away from it. Be that an hour or two a day. I was going to say the same thing along the lines of, I've lost count how many times I've said over the last two and a half years. If you compete, you can't be a good coach yeah yeah i can't remember how many times yeah. i've said that there's an element of that i don't want to come across in the air and say look everyone who competes at the minute you can never be a good coach but there's a process to go through yeah you know, i've been doing it for fucking 10 11 12 years i started as that competitor as that pt and uh, you know i earned my ranks i worked the way through but um it's another driver for me at the minute doing this and being that top level coach mm. I kind of, it's just like, okay, I've told myself I can't do that for a while. Mm. I'm going to fucking prove myself wrong. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, holds true. If you're a competitor and you're competing all fucking year round, you ain't going to be a no top level coach. Yeah, yeah. Because people don't see you as that. Yeah. People see you as a competitor. Yeah. So I think the way my thought process moving into this year is literally pick your times well, pick when you're going to be a little bit more quiet. Yeah. Go and enjoy the process. Come back out. Don't fucking chase it back to back back shows because you can't fucking hide around the fact that you are going to be fucking dragging your ass everywhere. Yeah. And that will shift over over time to your coaching ability. Yeah. All right. So that's why I said, going to do this show and that's it. Yeah. I got no plans to do anything else other than run the process, buy product at the end of it, go on stage, have some fun. Yeah. Back to coaching. Yeah. It's as simple as that. What I will say is there is value in saying, you can't have periods of prolific growth from a coaching perspective in your career and expect to do the same as an athlete. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. That's, uh, that's true. Yeah, 100%. Like I said, you compete in every fucking, all through the year. If that is your top priority, well, then leveling up as a coach isn't, it's just not going to be. It's the second thing you think about. Yeah, it's just, yeah of, of course, and just like anything in life, whether it's coaching, whether it's competing, whether it's a promotion in whatever fucking job you're doing. Yeah. If you want that fucking promotion, if you want that level up, you got to give your heart and fucking soul to it. Yeah. And I have for the last two and a half years. Yeah, yeah. My absolute soul to the point where at home I'm like, you're in my garden crying. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's lying there. There's a, there's uh, a funny uh, story about that. But I know what you mean. Basically, you're going. saying two and a half years. I've gave everything, and this is just me giving back to me, just mm. doing something I want to do. In my quieter period of coaching, without obviously the first ones of the year. But uh, yeah, like you just can't. You just uh, it's still true. If you're, doing, if your priority is competing, that's fucking amazing. Just don't expect that coaching to be at the same place because let's face it. Look at every top level coach now. Every top level coach that maybe you look up to and aspire to, how many of them are competing? Yeah. How many of them religiously competing all the time? Like I said, there may be some of them that are running the pros. Like yourself here, Kyle, you're going to get yourself back in shape, etc. You're. I'm never going to compete again. I just like, like being strong. But, but yeah, you're going to get yourself back in shape. You're going to feel good about yourself. Yeah. This is you giving yourself back. This is me giving myself something back for the last two and a half years. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's not to say that at the minute, like because of this short period here, I'm going to do that. Coaching is my priority. Coaching is always my priority. If for some crazy reason, which I don't think would happen, that this phase that I'm doing at the minute was to have a, even a smaller impact on the coaching at that current time, I'd stop. Yeah, yeah. Oh, because I'm not chasing anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would. Yeah. But I just I'm proving myself wrong. What I've said over the last over the last couple of years yeah. in a in a minute way. Yeah, no, I get you. I get you. All right. Amsterdam. <laughs> that was fucking good. You could that was, it was good. Okay, so obviously we hit the hit the seminar. Great turnout, I think, uh, numbers-wise. I think it's 28 or something. Yeah, but a great group of people. Like, And it was probably one of the... the one of the most asked questions seminar that I've been to with people getting with obviously the attendees getting involved, which is always good to see because seminars can be, especially when they're all day, a little bit, a lot of yeah. information to take up. And but um, yeah, a lot of questions are answered, a lot of things, a lot of people getting involved. And so we're looking forward to doing for more than that. And as a, you know, I don't want to sit here and talk about myself, but for me again, it was another great experience. Of I set a goal at the start of the year that I want to do more talks. Yeah, it ain't my strong point. I want to make it a stronger point. So doing more podcasts, doing more talks, doing stuff like this, doing more seminars is something that I really want to hone in this year. And like I said, it is just another tick in the box, another experience to gain from that. And it was a it was a good one. Yeah, good gym, good people. Yeah, good Persian food. Yeah. And, uh, good space cakes. Good space cakes. <laughs> Moving very, on. Very good space cakes. Only 20 milligrams, but it fucking blew my head off. God. Yeah. It was funny. Yeah, yeah. it was funny. I, th I hope Hader's uh, chin and elbows have recovered from falling off that. Uh... <laughs> and when and he's, he's like, like I can't, I can't I feel the fucking, fucking thing. thing. And then, <laughs> straight after <laughs> fake part. <laughs> Look, you know, oh. no, man, it's funny. He was, he was funny. I think it was just a good trip. It was a good, like, all, not everyone was over there, but a big chunk of the team over there. It was yeah. just kind of a getaway, you know? I mean, would we have liked more time in Amsterdam? Of course you would. Anyone would. Yeah. But we utilised the, we, we utilize the time well. We had some fun. A bit of a bonding with the lads. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Right then, so let's... So we're going to want to break down... Moving into the back end of uh, contest prep, we're like four and a half weeks out from the first two bros regional. Yep. Which is on the 23rd of March, which is the Condition Cup, two bros regional to start the year. So we're now, yeah, it's pretty much, it's 22nd of February now, we're pretty much four weeks out on the dot. You know, we've both got athletes that are, that are going into it, and that's then also, is it two weeks between the regional and the two pro weeks. qualifier? Ben yep. Weeders two weeks after? Yep. So key considerations, like this point of prep now, you've got to think you're knocking on the door of where you need to be in terms Striking of condition. You need to be there now. If you're not, you're in trouble. Oh. Let's just brainstorm now and just pick apart key considerations from an athlete standpoint and the coaches who are guiding those athletes. What needs to be in the back of the mind now at this point of prep? Or what's easy to be mismanaged at this point of prep as well? Okay, so listen, we haven't all got the luxury. We've all been there before. We've all had, no matter how good of a coach you are, we've all been there before where you've had, you've gone into those last four weeks and you're looking at the physique and you're like, fuck, we're, we're for, for whatever reason, there's a lot more than we thought to come off. Maybe that'd be from just, you know, not enough in-person stuff and, and looking at visuals and that. But like I said, the, the, we, we haven't always got the luxury and you just gonna have to, you know, grit the teeth and fucking get shit done as you need. But Let's talk about the fucking perfect scenario that if that you want to be in four weeks out. Like we just mentioned there, we want to be in striking distance. 
Like that is the most important thing. I think every one of the guys that I've got moving in to this regional bar one are all now just getting into that distance of striking distance. Yeah. So it's all bang on. Apart from Pierce, who I need to give six holidays and fucking one load. <laughs> He's a, an You're absolute about five freak. Weeks ago. Uh, yeah, but um, that's just from. I mean, Pierce himself. That's just from. You know, he's got crazy output. He's and that's a good one to talk about as well in terms yeah. of the impact Neat has on someone's ability massively. to mobilise and prep. Massive, massively. So obviously, Pierce is a PT and he's he's on the gym floor and he's doing like I think we st when he started off, he was like I can't help but do like twenty k steps, which is why his food's still in a fucking good place. But nevertheless, it's just pulling off him like fuck. I remember. When we spent more time with um, Jordan, like 2019, 2020, he lived in Manchester. And uh, I remember he used to talk about Corinne's preps mm -hmm. and how she got, you know, condition-wise, it's just out of this world. Mm -hmm. I remember him saying, she just never stopped moving. Yep, She'd be in the kitchen cooking meals, foot tapping on the floor, right. or she'd clean, or she'd go and do this, or she'd go and do that. And it was just constant, neat, up, higher, I, Never can, stop moving. I can fucking relate. When we did that prep last time, I was a bit fucking, because I couldn't sleep, I was about three in the morning doing yeah, fucking yeah, steps. Yeah. My steps were like 20K a day and it's, it just fucking flies off you. Yeah. Flies off you. So now I can yeah, definitely agree with that. The, the neat has a huge, huge impact. You see it with those who, who sit on their arse all day because of their work. They've got their fucking choice, but they sit on their arse all day and, and you can see that how hard they need to go. It's like that's it's, the individual that's on two hours of cardio. Yeah, because they're yeah, not yeah. doing anything else the yeah, rest yeah. of the day. Absolutely, it's like me at the minute. I do forty-five minutes of cardio a day. You've only just started. I'm a fucking arse all day. Yeah, yeah. And I haven't got time to go and fucking do steps. Yeah. Then you might say, "Well, make fucking time." It's like, well, there's only so many fucking hours in a fucking day. Mm. But um, it's just a, a route you have to take. No, I can't do many steps. My cardio at the end of this is probably going to be around two hours of working cardio. Mm. We'll find out. We'll see. But yeah, no, I totally agree. <laughs> so um, you want to be going into, like we said, striking distance. Things like, let's talk fatigue management for those last four weeks. Massively, massively important. I've seen it like numerous of times on how much a physique benefits from making sure that you run into those, let's say, last two weeks out ready. Yeah. Like ready. Because then you're going to have that ability to go pulling off your cardio, pulling off the, any lipos that you've got. Because listen, if you've got someone ready two weeks out, you don't need all your fucking lipos anymore. Don't be scared to fucking pull them. Yeah, yeah. Um, because that the particularly thyroid misuse, if you're using thyroid medication, but the clenbuterol, anything that's going to upregulate metabolic rate, even the likes of like any sympathetic driver like your himbin. Yep. Like if somebody is ready and you continue to drive those tools through, it is yep. going to eat away at the look. 100%. 100%. So, yeah, you've gone into those last two weeks. You've got the ability to then practice your load, see what works, see what numbers work. and But not also that. I, think, I don't think – I think there's a difference between fatigue management and stress management. Mm. Like if you're going into those last two weeks and you're not ready, mm. the impact that has on you from stress, yeah. which obviously carries over then to fatigue, like – is huge. Yeah. Like I said at the start, sometimes you have those that just didn't quite get there and you have to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Mm. But this is why I feel that when we when we talk, we spoke about it at the seminar, have being in the right position at the start of your prep will give you the best position yeah. to not come into this, not go into those issues. Yeah, and nine times out of ten in that situation, the client that you and this is a bit of hindsight, which is like sometimes you need to learn it the hard way, but the client that gets to that last final window and you are in a position where it's not there, yeah. you go and look back at week one photos yeah. and you're like, it's a little bit too far off the mark for them to start prep yeah. if you've budgeted in a 16 or a 20 week prep. Yeah. And it's like, they just need to start at a leaner set point yeah. and then get to a leaner set point by the end of the process yeah. without having to without having to just bully off tissue in the process of having to hammer them to get there. Like you said, if you have come up to that problem where you were chasing right at the end, don't just think, fuck me, I don't want to fucking do that again. Like, why? Why did it happen? Where was your stop? Learn from that. Don't just fucking change coaches because it, it, maybe yeah, that's yeah. your first prep with yeah. he or she. Like, both sit down together and go, this is why this has happened. Let's make sure it don't do that we don't do that next time. Yeah. And if anything, you're looking there at another accountability marker for your off-season. Yeah, for both parties. Yes. From the well, athlete's perspective and the coach. 100%. Yeah, so it's that's, that's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a big that's a biggie. And uh particularly prominent for well, male and female. Male and female. Female if it's like 
a wellness athlete or a bikini athlete or even yeah, any of those divisions where it's like, mm, I can't quite seem to get her legs in at the end of prep. It's like, I need to fucking take more liver start from something. I need to try and metabolize and <laughs> detoxify more estrogen. estrogen. It's like, it's not likely going to be any of those variables. It's just the fact that regardless of what you do with hormones, regardless of what you do with the cosmetics that look in terms of small manipulations, if you have started too soft at the start of your prep and not budgeted enough time, it is not going to happen in the time frame that you've dictated that yep. prep's going to last. 100%. And, you know, you'll see this as well in in off-season phases. The longer the longer they hold that adipose in those key areas they struggle to take off in prep, the longer it's there, typically speaking, the more inflamed they are, the longer it's there, the fucking harder it is to get off in yeah, the first yeah. place. We had a conversation about in the car about that. We yeah, 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 my client. Just a good example of that in terms yep. of uh, lower back fat and umbilical fat for like hip area fat for a male client. It's like if he's a men's physique athlete and that stays on there for months and months and months, it's, it's going to be a bastard to pull off when yep. he comes to pull off. Yep. Again, another bit of data there to go, right, we are going to off-season for 12 months. Yeah. Okay, because I mean, there's something to talk about in a minute about fucking patience. Yeah. You know, and someone's yeah, fucking... Yeah. When someone's looking to go show to show, and if you you know if you are looking to fucking win, you need to take that fucking time. And I, th I believe that is a, an athlete's problem and a fucking coach's problem. Yeah, which we'll go through. But uh, yeah, it's like that's why if you're going to do a twelve month off season and you know that you just you tend to hold it in that lower back, for example, on that client, like this is where you know if, even though you're not competing within that twelve months, this is where you go right, okay. Here is where, you know, for eight weeks, I want to pull that back down again. If it does get a little bit too much for those tidy up phases, I think uh, I've been I've been one before because I am a little bit of a dinosaur where I've gone, ah, oh, fuck these fucking tidy up phases. Fucking I just fucking grow. But over the years, over the last couple of years of experience, I'm like, nah, these things are very, very, very important for things like this. So, yeah, what else could there be on that side? Training management in terms of volume, your key thought process at the back end of a prep when you're close to condition is understand the change between the volume and the workload and even like how many sets you're taking all the way what is needed to build tissue relative to what is needed to retain tissue yeah and what i'd say is sometimes this isn't even something that you'll actively change from a coaching standpoint they will almost do it for you yeah and they'll be like i'm a little bit battered today yeah, and you're like stuff. Just go in and push some blood around and yeah. take sets, you know, a rep in the tank and pull these sets out. And then it starts to, that's the beauty of auto-regulation there. That starts to then become, right, we'll apply this to all your sessions now and just gradually start pulling this down the closer you get to stage. Because that's another key component of, you know, something we spoke about at the weekend was, if we look at this, uh, it's all riding on the nervous system, this autonomic branch of the nervous system. And you've got sympathetic and parasympathetic and it's a constant seesaw yep. and that training response is going to be pulling you down into that red sympathetic okay. and you need that to drive the adaptation yep. but too much of that is then making your life much harder on prep yep. i had a guy that came and checked in yesterday you won't mind me mentioning leon he's doing the first regional and he said look my sleep is cr starting to crack my sleep's starting to get worse and worse and it's like well this four right weeks time. out it's about the right time this is where your body's going to be under the most stress this is where you know, we might need to now review the approach to training in terms of setup. We might need to now review, you know, stim intake with lipolytics in hand as well. Like he's on 40 micrograms of cleanse, so it's not a massive dose there. But the bigger thing for the actual sleep management side of that is the fact that he's getting to very, very low levels of body fat. He's more fatigued, so he's using more caffeine across the day. He's now using the pre-workout. He's, yeah. he's now having three coffees instead of two, whatever it might be. You know, half-life of caffeine lasts a certain amount of time, especially if you're having that in the afternoon. If you're going into a late PT session, you're like, fucking hell, I'm dragging my ass here. I'm going to have a double espresso before I go into my 6 p.m. client. Yeah. Your sleep's going to be fucked. You might not see that as in terms of falling asleep. Yeah, yeah. You might, I'm still... I'm, but then it's just knocking it's, on. Yeah. It's knocking yeah, on, yeah. impacting sleep yeah. quality. It's knocking yeah. on. So all those things are a massive, a massive component to that. I think from a coaching standpoint, probably the most important aspect there is uh, the ability to be able to communicate as well. And if the client is starting to flap a little bit about yeah. anything, the worst thing you can possibly do as a client is not communicate that with the coach. Yeah. Is regardless of how stupid it is yeah. in your mind, if you don't say, it's going to start eating you away. Yeah, I was going to say, if you are doing some water regulation to your own training, again, you need to yeah, tell, them. Coach, tell yeah. them tell them that you're doing that. It's not a fucking problem, but it's something that that data can be gathered to go, right, okay, 
you're right. Maybe we need we do maybe need it needs to apply to your steps or your cardio or exactly anything that. now. Exactly that. You know, exactly that. I think as well going into those, you through that four weeks, you get into those. If you are in that luxury of being striking distance as well, making sure that I know you do it, I do it, but with your athletes, it's like okay, like I want to start seeing some more visuals, not just fasters in the morning. Some post workout stuff. Send yeah, me some. Yeah. You don't need to wait for your check in. Just send it all over, and let's just start to see what that look after. What does it look like after two meals? After X amount of water? After, you know, forty five minutes of training, etc. Yeah. These are all massively important that are going to help the coach in terms of you know it's online coach. It's hard already as it is. So if you can start sending some more stuff over, I'm certainly one that will just fucking welcome it because it's all data for that elusive peak week. That's the thing. It's the all the refeeds and everything you're manipulating in that final stage. The best look in terms of you know trying to get an, a grasp of when they're going to be on stage and what time and what they look like with a certain amount of meals and water and salt. Yep. yep. When's that best look dictated? If they're on stage at nine a.m. or eleven a.m. or one p.m. whatever it might be, or even later. Sometimes yeah, so. we've got a different st- a different show or division. All those things are really valuable points of feedback in those last positions, but. The take home there is the fact that you've got to be ready to actually see that in the first place. Of course. Nice little caveat there. One of my um, mentoring clients, Bobby, over from Ireland, peak performance to run a gym in Ireland. Fuck knows where it is, but somewhere in Ireland. And um, he had a case study yesterday. Um, He had a, a gem pop client, but a photo shoot prep client who was in really good shape, but he was five weeks left in his uh, diet. Yeah. And uh, he's on 400 grams of carbs, but he said, uh, you know, he's pretty close. Like for a shoot, like if you put a glaze in the tan, I mean, it'd look fucking great. Yeah. He's on 400 grams of carbs. So his food's not low, but his output is high from steps. And he was basically trying to grasp, you know, what do you do from here? Do I try and hammer him a little bit harder? Do I pull back now? What do you do? And I said, it's quite hard to, in this situation, is a really good example of how you can apply that to contest prep. It's quite hard to be in a position where you can assess that look when a they're constantly checking in fasted and empty in the morning with no pump and you know lighting that you'll have at the house but also b when they're constantly flat and depleted yep. his depleted is 400 grams of carbs yeah, yeah so for bobby he's like but surely he's on 400 grams of carbs he can't be depleted it's good. relative yeah. it's relative to their expenditure and their energy demands and, and their requirements but you can't really have a full assessment of where you truly are if you don't see what it looks like maxed out yeah so like the best thing you can do now is refeed him for two days, yep. take his carbs right up. I said, you know, 800 grams for two days, so it's two times. If you look at glycogen synthesis, like 10 to 12 grams of carbohydrate per kilogram, gonna be more for the individual if it's leaner and more activity. Yep. But max them out for two days and see what happens yep. and where that look goes. Because you've got that luxury too. And then you'll be in a position where it's like, look at those photos post-workout, there you're gonna see a look of what you need to change. Yep. And if it's perfect, it's like, right, job's pretty much done here. Yep. If there's something quite, you know, maybe lower back's holding a little bit, or it's, I'm not quite happy with his abs being like that, then you've got a strategy of what you can move with. But you've just refed him, so. It's the same position <laughs> with yeah. same position with um, prep. Yep, absolutely. You need to see where they are, if you were presenting a stage look, where they are, you know, refed, fatigue dropped, where are we at, what's left to do? Yep, I agree. It's just micromanagement, isn't it? Yep. And it's just basically making you, you're just putting all the pieces of the puzzle together. So when you get to that one week out mark, it's all predictable and you have all the data that you need to manage that final week. And you almost have, in reality, you almost have the strategy that you are preempting you're going to use in your back pocket already. Yep. And it's not, I'm a week out from a show, do I? linear load them do i front load them do i back load them do i use a diuretic do i use peak max what are they what are they on what salt are they on what meals do i use what carbs do i use what carb sources they're going to load with if you're at that stage you're in a spot of bother at that point if you know all that and you've gone into those that last week and you know all that like i said at the start that stress management is going to be so nice going into that last week yes you're probably going to be hungry still yes you're probably going to be a little bit like fucking still cognitively fucked yeah but you're going into that week knowing it's worked We've tested it. I know what we're doing. Just see this through that now. Mm. And instead of going, fuck, we still don't know the best look here. What, what's going to happen? What's coach going to do? Yeah. What, what are we doing here? Yeah. And that's the, that little bit of complacency will leak into other areas of the prep because yeah. they're going to start to panic then. Yeah. And then you'll get people who bottle it just because of the fact that they're panicking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then the most prominent thing to speak about there, the most poignant thing, I don't even know. I was trying to say the biggest words possible. Sound. 
as you normally do, is going to be the transition between first show, regional, and pro qualifier. You've got a two-week period. So you're either in that situation, taking the feedback that everything's bang on and you're trying to carry it in, or maybe correct a few things that you may be trialed and... It's a trial, isn't it? Trialed and corrected. If you've got, I can honestly say, three of the four that I've got competing are like established guys that are hunting a pro card. Yeah. Uh, we can say that. They've been in overalls. Overalls after and then overalls. Then you have to fist fight backstage to see who wins it. Yeah, but... Um, in the car park in Maidenhead. <laughs> Not that we'd be familiar with that. That's what. <laughs> Fuck. That's what. I think there's a pro coach flag in the car park, isn't there? <laughs> this is conquered land. <laughs> You've lost me now, mate. You've fucking lost me, mate. Four guys. Who are but four, they're all four, four seasoned guys. competitors. Yeah, four guys. i got three guys that are going for it as in terms of that, that elusive pro card. So yeah. for me... The regional is about not doing anything silly that's going to carry over to that look. Like, yeah. for example, like diuretics. Yeah. It's very hard sometimes to use those tools, have them fucking peaked, yeah. and then the next two weeks bring it all back again. Yeah. Because there's going to be a cascade of fucking ups and downs, uh, rebounds from that. So it'll be for me using that regional for just a practice run and to kind of like a like I said, when you're two weeks out doing some mock, mock picks. Yeah. That is what I'm looking at the regional as. And I've told them all that because their bigger goal is the fucking Ben Weeder pro qualifier. And yeah. then, then after, unfortunately, they all can't win. If one did, we've still got two more to carry on battling. But yeah, that is pretty much it. And then I've got, it's like I said, I've got that fourth guy. Uh, I've got the fourth guy, uh, Sid, who's competed back in the day of the UK BFF, who's also very, very, very good. But it was a men's physique. Or men's physique, right. yeah. But this is his first time back in, I'd say, probably around about five, six years. Yeah. So I'm not telling him we're going for a fucking pro card. Yeah. Let's go and see what we've got. And the regional, mate, I haven't fucking... Going for a we're going for a burger and chips. We're going for a burger and chips after, mate. Okay. Yeah, but, but it's like that, that's also a good thing where it's like you've got to be in a position where... And this is actually quite a hard balance, to be fair, because you are going to have clients that you put on your social media and you, you know, you're getting tagged with and all this stuff who are at completely different levels and experiences and expectations and others. But those others are going to be in a position where if, well, if I'm representing this team, yeah. he's going to expect me to do this. I've had it before. But then... I've had people leave me, mate. I've had, I've had people leave me. It's a thing, right? I've had people leave me saying, don't quite think I'm good enough for your team. I'm like, yeah. what the fuck? Like, yeah. that is the wrong thought process. Like, yeah. So that's for me, as a coach, to set those expectations going into shows. Yeah. You know, this is what our goal is. Mm. Like I said about Sid, he's a weapon. Like, fucking tiny, tiny waist. Got the right amount of tissue. Yeah. But there's no way I'm going to say to him, you're going to go get a pro card, then we Yeah. Like, we don't even know if we're going to do that. We haven't thought that far. We've just said, this is your first time back. We're going to do the regional. One step at a time. At one step at a time. And earn your stripes. Absolutely. Ab absolutely, mate. Stripe earning. It's like for me. It's like for me. Like I said, I'm not saying about all that fucking pro code anymore. Mm. Bro, I've never fucking been in an overall for a two bros one. Mm. I've won back in the day in UK BFF shows. I ain't never been in an overall at two bros. Yeah. What right have I got to go, I'm going to get a pro card? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I haven't. So that's just, a, yeah, like I said, as a coach, you need to set those expectations for your clients as you are setting them up yeah. for, a, for a big one. And that's also, a carryover there is also, if you've got someone who is literally said to you, Kev, someone said to you, I want you to prep me. I want you to make me pro-worthy. I do not want to go on stage until you feel that I am ready to be a pro. Yeah. It's the coach's fucking responsibility to go, well, you're not competing yet then. Yeah. You're not competing yet then. If you've got someone hunting and then you, you, they've been getting close, but the feedback is they need a little bit more of this or they need a little bit more of that. And they, don't say to them next season, we're going straight back into a fucking prep. Yeah. Because that client is going to want to hear you say that. Yeah, yeah. We all love being, if you are a competitor, you'll know yourself. The minute you start getting a little bit out of shape, you're like, I want to fucking prep again. Yeah, yeah. I want to fucking prep. Not getting as much likes on Instagram. So if your coach turns around to you and says, no, no, we're going to go and compete. Nah, that's yeah. on them. That's bad fucking coaching for me. That, that is, honestly. If you've got someone who doesn't need, again, we had that conversation over about Landon. Okay, so we've got Landon. Probably won the biggest class I've seen last season at the British finals, class A. Okay, he won that, got into the overall. 
didn't get a look in really and would like to see a little bit more switching around but that is bodybuilding but um he's had some time off he checked in the other day and says um, right i'm ready to rock and roll again i'm ready to he's been trt in for a, since that last show for reasons that I don't need to share personally but um he said to me look I want to go again. He's going to be doing my show at the end of the year. The ZFA and Games, a little plug there. And then sent him over, okay, this is what we're going to do. And then he says, you know, if you want me to have a longer time off to make those improvements that you think if I need any, then we'll go again. It was like, mm. your feedback wasn't about having any improvements. It was just, for him, he could only do one pro qualifier last year. Yeah. So it was just all in on that one. For, again, personal reason, he couldn't do any more. Yeah. I was like, Landon, if you would have carried on last time and gone and done a couple more shows, I have a very, very good feeling that you could have got a pro card last year. Yeah. So for him, I'm like, you're ready. You don't need massive amounts of uh, progress. It's just refinement. Yeah. You know yourself with Landon, just bring his abs in a little bit deeper. Yeah, yeah. You fucking, you can do that on prep. So yeah, it's, uh, I think it's the coach's responsibility there to make sure that if you have got a client come through the door and they want big accolades like a fucking pro card, whether they've competed or not before, we all, we've said that before, you can't fucking go for a pro card if you've never competed, but if that is their goal, and well, it's your responsibility to go, no, no, let's take in two, three, four years off, not get someone peeled just for clout on fucking Instagram. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Anything else to say on that side? Growing muscle, taking that time, patience. Fuck, like it's probably, it's one of the Multiple biggest, biggest yeah, reasons. it's patience, man. People think tissue grows on trees, man. Like, I fucking wish it did. Oh man, it's like back in, you're in someone's off season for six weeks and like, coach, I've made loads of fucking progress, let's prep. Yeah. You haven't, you've made some decent progress, but it takes time. Like tissue, good quality tissue, growing the tissue, and then letting it sit. Yeah. If you just grow tissue, go straight into prep for, let's say you grow tissue, you grow, I don't know, over six months, let's say you grow, I mean, what, 10 pounds would be fucking amazing, right? 10 pounds would be very nice, yeah. Okay, then just go straight into prep. You haven't let that muscle sit around for a little while. Yeah. You don't own that muscle. Do you know what I mean? For me, again, it's something that I've seen with coaching over the last couple of years is when someone's added that tissue, let it fucking sit there before we can go into our prep. Mm -hmm. Let it fucking sit there, own it, you've earned it. Just let it fucking sit there. Let your body get used to it. Yeah. But yeah, patience, man. Patience. If you are in an off season and you have big accolades, give yourself fucking time because next year, the year after that, fucking stage is always going to be there. It's always going to fucking be there. You're in no rush. Yeah. Fuck Instagram. Fuck your likes. Fuck like, all that shit. Okay. Be in bodybuilding for the right fucking reasons. Get to where you want to get to. Patience. Then go fucking hunting when you know that I'm going to be in the mix now. Yeah. Yeah, because otherwise it's another year that you're missing the mark, isn't it? Yeah. It's another year of you spending 10 grand trying to travel all around the world to Bodybuilding, compete. Bodybuilding, you haven't got a lot. In this, you haven't got a long lifespan yeah. of, of doing... Not saying that you fucking didn't die, but in terms of the, in terms of your fucking bodybuilding, let's just say you're twenty well, years when old. You're you in got, your, when you're in your prime and yes, you have the ability to do it, you've only got so fucking long you can yeah. physically give to this. Can physically give to this. So you just make sure that when you do go hunting, if you have got big accolades, be fucking ready, man. Mm. Be ready for it. Nice, solid. That good. That's a soundbite for you. That's a real. Uh, you've been brought into the Coach Approach Avengers. Congratulations. Yes. I thought we weren't going to announce that yet. Oh, fuck. We're not going to announce that yet. No, not for another... Well, this will be a secret. Four this weeks. will be a secret. Let's just cut you might out. have to beep that bit, actually. <laughs> if you, that's if you, idea, actually. Just, beep it. Just beep the word. Yeah. And then yeah. we can just basically just build some hype now and then. I don't know yeah. what you're talking about, mate. Yeah. But there's something coming. Which yeah, there's is, something which is exciting. Which is, which is cool for me. Which is exciting. You know yourself, we had the conversations about my thoughts on it and everything. And if I needed to be part of it, if for me to warrant me leveling up as a coach. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But no, it is exciting. It is good with the stuff that we'll trying to say stuff here that's not going to get Yeah, I'll just brush over it. Just, just yeah. delivering. It's all good. It's all good. It's all, it's all good. good. What else is there? I will talk about, we mentioned the sponsors in a minute. Yeah. We need to talk about physique photo shoot prep launch. We need to talk about ICM just to announce it. It's pretty fucking cool. It's pretty cool that ICM that's we're just done. Um, yeah, so we've got a couple of things coming up. April, first week of April, we're launching the ICM, which is our new education platform. It stands for 
the Institute of Coaching Mastery. So Pro Coach is basically going to continue as it is, but the education vehicle that we'll use alongside that now is going to be rebranded into the ICM. And that is specifically going to be based on going back to really the golden days of what we had with the muscle mentors in terms of the foundation coverage of education for PTs and personal trainers and people wanted to get into physique coaching in the first place. And a lot of the people and a lot of the content that is out there right now, in my opinion, is still too advanced for majority of people that just need to learn how to be better coaches. Because realistically, when you're going through your first transformations with a client, when you're building a portfolio of results, you learning the nuances of peaking an athlete into stage is not applicable to 99.9% .9 of the people that you're working with in the first place. Mm -hmm. And you need to learn the basics of how to program for a client with nutrition, with training, with sleep, with recovery, basic understanding of physiology in all those departments. And if you grasp that, you're going to level up as a coach. And that means your client results are going to level up and your caliber of clients that are going to level up. And then your business starts to Absolutely. starts to scale. We're going back to roots again with that. And we're basically going to build that whole syllabus, which is being built right now, on PT and physique coach education and giving you every single tool in the toolbox you need to maximize that. We've got guest educators coming in. We're going back on to female physiology, we're going back onto the nervous system, we're going back onto sleep, we're going back onto nutrition, both applied for general population clients and also advanced body comp clients like photo shoot preps. We're going down exercise mechanics again with the guys over at Pre-T Project, James and Paul, awesome. who are gonna come in and deep dive on anatomy and exercise mechanics. We're gonna have a forum on there for the Coaches Corner Forum, which is gonna be your ability to come in and present any case studies that you wanna present with. Client examples, I get calls all the time for people that are coming in and paying per hour or for a 30 minute slot to, to deep, like Bobby did yesterday, to deep dive into client case studies. That's an opportunity for you to sign up and basically do all that on that platform. And you have access to all of us as coaches to get feedback as to, right, in this situation, I've got this client who's four weeks out from a photo shoot prep, they're not changing. I've got this client I've put on a dart for eight weeks. He hasn't lost any weight, he hasn't changed visually, or he hasn't, you know, he's starting to regress. What would you do in this situation? And you've got people who have done this for literally decades worth of time yeah. at the level that you want to be at who yeah. can come in and give you informed advice on your situation so you can start leveling up your client results. I'll just fucking add to this. Like, I wish back in my day, because I've been through this yeah, fucking yeah. progress. We all PT, have, man. And I'd probably say there's a lot of PTs out there on the gym floor at the minute that do want to transition into physique coaching, into prep coaching. Yeah. But I can't reiterate enough, and I'm a fucking dinosaur, I can't reiterate enough how fucking important this shit is to go through that fucking process. I've been through similar things when I was a PT, but I've obviously seen all the stuff that you're going to be fucking yeah. giving out. And fuck me, mate, if, God, I'd have wished there was this when I was a PT. Yeah. So, and that's not, it's not a fucking salad, but I'm, I'm just saying that is legit. Like, this is going to be a fucking fantastic opportunity for all PTs who are looking to be, dare I say, in the position I am at the minute, you know, yeah. being a prep coach. And it saves you, I remember back when we used to do travel to RTS or travel to muscle nerds or, you know, M10, any CPD we used to do, any continued education, you'd end up spending thousands of pounds traveling the world, mm -hmm. listening to people speak and going on courses and going on weekends away. And to have that at your fingertips now on a resource like that, it makes it almost too easy to yep. get better. There's no, it, excuse. It's, there's no there's excuse. No, there's, yeah. no, there's no excuse for that lost fucking PT in anymore. Yeah. There isn't. There's yeah. is no excuse. Well, set yourself apart from, you know, a pretty oversaturated but undereducated industry. You set yourself apart by having that extra knowledge and, and capacity in your toolbox to get the client results that other people can't get because you have the awareness of how to manage yeah. those situations. Yeah. Photo shoot prep for pro coaches just in the pipeline now. It's launching soon. I'll put the details in the um, bio so you'll have sign up links and what is entailed in that. There's a practical day, an in person day, going through a 12 week transformation with a shoot at the end and with Magic Eye Media. So you get content as well. So if you're a coach looking to level up your business, get in shape, get some documentation with photos, and it's going to help you tenfold. It's exactly what I did in 2014 with James Sutton. It's what you would have done as well. Yep. Get in shape, put it on your Instagram, yep. document the journey. Yep. It'll be the quickest, fastest way of leveling up your business. Yep. Quickest, yep. fastest way. I mean, we, we let this and we sit there, we take the piss out of Instagram. But if you're looking to get a bit it's bigger, bigger, bigger audience, then you running the process, you doing 
what you're trying to get other people to yeah, do. Walk the walk. Yeah, it's a good. Uh, it's something good to do uh, to share. One hundred percent. Yeah, man. And sponsors wise, we've just uh, linked back up with, uh, with Medichex. So. Pro Coach, your one word, discount off blood work. Pretty sure it only works with the panels that aren't already discounted because sometimes they run like monthly promotional offers. But anything you want, blood work wise, we use blood analysis a lot with our clients at the moment worldwide. But in the UK, particularly and in Ireland, you can access MediChecks yeah. uh, using Pro Coach for the discount code to get some money off. And they'll either send you a package out, you can do a home blood test, which personally I don't really like but you can get a clinician to come to your home to take the blood or you can go to one of the partners it's, like that blood quid. Quid. it's cheap it? yeah, it's yeah. worth it instead it's, of you it's, trying to drain blood out your finger it's kitchen. worth it because from experience when clients do it themselves yeah the amount of times it comes back failed failed yeah, yeah. do it again yeah, yeah. go do it again then you've got no fingers left yeah <laughs> supplement needs as always pro coach should check out any supplements that you need funnily enough it's called supplement needs they've just released a creamy rice which is fucking banging it's really good so that's another good one i'm actually traveling to dubai this weekend with about 10 kilos of it in my bag and it's a white powder so if it breaks and i get stopped at customs yeah, i'm not coming home so yeah if you can run this from now on zach that'll be brilliant <laughs> <laughs> that'll be like dipping the finger in why does it taste caramel mm. honestly guys it's not cooking yeah that's photo shoot prep that sponsors icm that's pretty much it mate that was episode one yeah. well episode five technically but episode one in the new setup yeah i like it you've done a good job guys well done great yeah. very professional there's a guitar up there so at some point in the future we might end up playing that guitar as well how long have we been talking is that now? 56 minutes. Fuck me, I'm sitting here waiting for a 30 minute break. Nah, <laughs> we've gone straight through, mate. Nice. That's the monster. Nice. And the clan. And the clan. Um, no, you're him, but no. No, you're him, but. Uh -uh. Funnily enough, that's a good topic. I could it's, sit here and talk about that. It's something clients. I'm using more and more frequently less yep, with same. people because it just sends them fucking mad. Yep. Oh, you, won't, you won't mind me saying Alex. Alex, we prepped last year, got very, very close. Alex Woods is an absolute weapon. Mm. Again, he's one of the boys that is going to be uh, <laughs> weapon. Weapon. He is. He's brilliant. Yeah, he's. So at the start of the prep, we were moving through, and it, it was time to add in some lipos. And Ian Bine came up in conversation, and he was like, "You know what? Should we just not do Ian Bine?" I was like, "Absolutely fine, absolutely fine," because for him, it sends him do lally. It sends him do lally. This prep has been. He has been fucking awesome. Because, again, because I've got that data from last prep on how it went a little bit pear-shaped last prep, I got that. Because it was psychological, this prep, we haven't ran Tren. We haven't ran Yehimbine. And I don't think there's no coincidence that Alex has been fucking on top of everything. Yeah. He said he said the other day in our check-in, he was like, this is the fucking best I've ever felt four and a half weeks out of a prep. So yeah, And, and others are not using it. And, you know... <sighs> Does it help? You know, yeah, you know, you've got... I'd rather someone sleep. Yeah, and, exactly and that. And not be a nervous Exa wreck. Exactly that, exactly that. Obviously, the data area for Inbine is very minute. So we use it because antidotally, we feel it's it's helped. Yeah. Okay. But um, yeah, I'm with you on that. Use a lot less. Again, another guy who is going into this, who is hunting, who is an absolute weapon, again. Uh, <laughs> Where's that come I from? don't know. It sounds fucking good though. <laughs> Mr. Matt LeMay. Mr. Yes, Ma yeah, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Yeah, Matt yeah, LeMay. Yeah. We had the conversation with day. We implemented your Himbine. I asked him at the start, you know, do you think you've got any problems with it? He was okay. But then when he did start taking it, he was like, I do feel a little bit more anxious. Yeah, and, he, and he quit prep this morning, so. <laughs> no, no. He did say he felt a little bit anxious. So we're, something that we're monitoring. But uh, yeah, that is a, uh, some, a tool that we've obviously used in the past again i'm with you though i've used a lot less now because of that yeah that side effect i still use the topical stuff with a weight belt uh, waist belt yeah quite like that for yeah mobilization around hips and umbilical getting blood flow there whether it's the topical you or whether it's the capsium extract which is causing more heat in the area with the waist compression and it's driving more blood there so you can mobilize there potentially yep. but i use it i use it I yeah it. I it's it. um it's one of those ones it's just the trade-off is the trade-off worth that and yeah. I, I remember even in 2019 when i was i think i was 10 days out from pca birmingham when i was prepping with jordan and i was on like 25 milligrams of your him bin that primer force your him bin and i remember taking it out like 10 days out and not taking it in the morning and i remember walking i did, used to walk to walk, walk into nottingham to get coffee to get my steps in yeah. and i walked to nottingham and i was like it's literally like my whole life has changed <laughs> yeah it's like i don't feel like a nervous wreck yeah I'm i've not, had clients I'm say not that jittery i've had clients say that it's, it's just that gut feeling you get where it's like Oh, it's prep again. And then it's like something feels completely different today. Crazy. Mate, I just had a uh, pushed who's doing Iraq next week. We've got a minute left. 
Pushed is pushing it. Oh, pushed it. He's fucking. Yeah, he's deadly, mate. Fucking mate. He's deadly. Right, I think that's going to wrap up. We've pretty much hit the hour. Thanks for listening, guys. We're going to try and get every other week. We'll be pretty solid, but if we can do more frequently, then we'll do more frequently. The biggest thing for us, Zach, is continuing this once the season starts. Yeah. Yeah. And we've just got to force ourselves. Do more roundups. It's only, it's only half an hour away. We, there's, I think people want to hear it. I think people want to hear more with the roundups of shows and who's going in and yeah, who's done well. We promise we won't upset you this time as well. No. No. Absolutely. <laughs> well, maybe we will, but yeah. we're just being honest. But yeah, always. thanks for listening. Appreciate the support as always. And uh, we will catch you guys on the next one.